irrigation during surgery is extremely important, but not for the reason you think. Let me explain. Historically, we have been told not to heat up the bone. And we have been scared like a German nursery rhyme, like a nursery story that, you know, hey, if you go out in the woods, you're going to get lost and you're never going to find your way home, okay? So we have been scared in the industry that we're going to heat up the bone and we're going to have thermal necrosis. I've even heard people from the podium go, this implant failed and I'm pretty sure it failed because of thermal necrosis. And, and the problem is it's just simply not true. Okay, it's just, it's simply not true. Let me explain a couple things and you'll see why. Number one, you can't diagnose thermal necrosis. Like there's not a clinician out there that can show me an implant that fails to integrate or integrates and then fails later or, or integrates and has poor wound healing. You can't show me any single case and from the radiograph or the clinical photo, tell me that it was due to thermal necrosis. You can't versus anything else that could cause that, like poor wound healing, diabetes, vitamin D deficiency. All of the things that we know that can interact with, a, with an implant healing can be at play in addition to heating up the bone. So th- I challenge anyone in the comments below, I challenge anyone to give me a definition, a differential diagnosis That is so clear that there's no way you can misunderstand it and say, this is the only thing that would differentiate it. This is definitely thermal necrosis and nobody can do it because no no one has done it because you can't even figure it out. So the starting point is we can't even prove that it happens. Okay. Now it gets even more interesting with the science. And, And the reason is, is that everything in engineering, in bioengineering has a coefficient of thermal conductivity. It is the value that engineers assign to materials in, in the way that they absorb heat, okay? Now, you all know this because you make pots out of metal because pots absorb heat readily, right? Metal absorbs energy, heat energy readily. It, it, it heats up quickly, right? You also know that coolers made out of styrofoam are very resistant to change in temperatures. That's why we make coolers out of them, okay? So... The question you have to ask yourself is where does bone fall in that spectrum? And it turns out, guys, that bone is very similar to styrofoam. In fact, if you were going to if you were going to think of bone, you would think of bone like styrofoam. It is very, very resistant to heating up. Okay, so you go, well, what does that mean? It it means that when when you go into an osteotomy and you put a burr in there, even if you heated it up, the only area that you would heat up would be on the surface. And if you've ever used a 702 burr and a haw drill and the posterior to take out a wisdom tooth, sometimes you get brown bone. But what do you know about brown bone? Brown bone, which is the burnt bone that you see when you go too fast with your haw drill, what you see there is it's only on the surface. So if you were to come back and feather it a little bit with your 702, that damaged bone goes away, okay? So when we are doing an implant, we go through a series of drills, don't we? So we start with typically a 2.0 drill, and then we go to a 2.5 drill, and I'm talking about in the diameter sense, and then we go to a three and a three, five and a four, and then we stop. What happens is is that even if you heated up the bone with a 2.0, whatever bone you heated up with a 2.0 is immediately removed with a 2.5. And then when you heat up, the, if you heated it up with a 2.5, you immediately remove it with a 3. And so no matter what you do, as long as the very last drill doesn't heat up the bone, it doesn't even matter. So all of the drilling sequence doesn't really matter, even if you did heat up the bone. Now it gets even more interesting because you've got to heat the bone up to 42 degrees centigrade and you've got to hold it there for a minute in order to have an osteonecrosis. And that's from the literature. That's clear, okay? So if you're sitting for any of the exams from any of the organizations, any of the implant organizations, there's always a test question that says, at what temperature does bone necrose? And the answer is 47 degrees centigrade. But that's not the whole answer. There's a second part that's never asked, and that is 47 degrees for a minute. You have to heat the bone up to 47 degrees, and then you have to hold it there 
for a minute in order for that bone to necrose. That's a long time, guys. You really would have to be special in a negative way in order to heat the bone up that much. Okay, you'd really have to be doing something terribly wrong, even if you're freehanding it. And you go, well, what do you mean even if you're freehanding it? Well, you're more likely to heat up the bone freehanding than you are when you do a guide. And people are like, what? What do you mean? Well, here's the problem. If you freehand implants, and if, if anyone's ever freehanded an implant, once you get a purchase point with your drill, you do not give up that purchase point. Once you get the tip on target of your drill, you drill to depth. Okay, you don't go, you don't do a pumping action because when you pump, when freehand, if you pump, you come right out of the hole and you don't know where the hole is. You got to try to find the hole again. So nobody does that. So your drill times are significantly longer when you freehand than when you use guided. People said, you know, right now, somebody's having a heart attack right now on the other side of this camera, right? You're going, what are you talking about? When you do guided surgery, your drill times are about 1.5 seconds per drill. So you go in and you come out. That's 0.75 seconds going in and 0.75 seconds coming out. It's less than a second going in. It's extremely fast and very efficient. So back to the question at hand, is irrigation important? Guys, when I do guided surgery and I use irrigation, the pump doesn't even kick on by the time I come out of the mouth. Usually it goes, the pump, the pump is connected to the motor. When I step on the rheostat and the drill starts, I drill the hole and I come out and then the water goes plop, 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 plop as I take the drill across the room to change the, to, to change the burr. It's not even helping at all. It's, I'm in and out of the hole before the water even turns on. That's the difference, right? It's that efficient. So irrigation, I said, is important, but not for what you think. So many people think that I've got to irrigate the, 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 the site. And what the irrigation is helpful for is cleaning the flutes of your drill. The flutes are the spiral, the helical spirals on the side of your drill. They're not there for cutting. The sides are there to collect the debris. Okay. If the sides get clogged with the debris, the cutting efficiency of your drill goes down. If the cutting efficiency of your drill goes down, your drill times go up. If your drill times go up, so does the heat of the bone. Okay. So as a good surgical practice, what you want to do is you want to be very efficient with your drilling. And what you're going to do is when you place that 2.0 drill into the, into your surgical guide, you're going to pump. So you're going to push, come out a little bit. And what happens when you come out is it allows the water to hit the shank of the drill on the flutes, remove the debris, and then you go in a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And typically, typically, the pumping action is only necessary on the 2.0 and the 2.5 because after you created the osteotomy, the rest of the drills are just widening the osteotomy and they don't normally need the pumping action because there's not enough debris at that point to fill up the, the flutes. So make sure you're pumping for efficiency and using the water to clean the flutes, but the water doesn't really assist in any sort of fashion with regards to irrigating and keeping the bone cool. Now, just to add a little bit more to this conversation, if you have irrigation and you are using a surgical guide, it hits the plastic. Now, it's only going to hit the plastic for 1.5 seconds, which means it's not going to do anything. If you were going to drill and freehand, if you're going into a healed site, the water is hitting soft tissue or bone, okay? So where is the cutting action occurring? Well, the cutting action is occurring on the tip of the drill. So even if you wanted to irrigate and keep the bone cool, you, you would have to irrigate inside the hole at the tip, which you can't do unless you've got a fancy burr that has a, a cannula in the center, which people have tried, but they've gotten away from it. Why? Because it's not necessary. Because you're only in the bone for a matter of seconds and you're out. And remember, it is like a, it's like a cooler. It doesn't heat up fast, okay? It doesn't heat up fast. And one more thing, just to add to the, to the fun of the whole conversation. If you rub your hands together, right, both hands get warm, right? So if you've got a piece of metal called a drill and it's spinning in a hole and the drill is made out of metal, stainless steel, and it can heat up readily and the hole is made out of styrofoam, bone, but it's like styrofoam, if the drill is not hot, when you take it out of the hole, the hole is not hot. All right, right? So if you take the drill out and you touch it and it's not the same temperature 
as a Starbucks coffee. It, you know, like Starbucks coffee, oop, it's too hot, it's too hot, it's too hot, and now it's right, I can drink it, right? If it's not that hot, when you take it out, the whole is not that hot. It is physically impossible. Try rubbing your hands together and only heating up one hand, okay? So if one hand's made out of stainless steel and the other one's made out of bone, and bone's like styrofoam, okay, and you rub them together, if one hand isn't hot, the other hand isn't hot. So you can't even tell me, even if you freehanded it and been in the hole for a long time, you've never taken your burr and then gone to change the drill and go, ooh, 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 that's hot, right? Otherwise, you're doing something terribly wrong, okay? So maybe there's somebody out there going, yeah, I've done that. Okay, you've got to change your ways, okay? <laughs> Come to the class. We got to talk, okay? Because if you're doing that, you're way off base, okay? You've got to, you've got to do it fast, okay? So take home is this. Fast drills, the way to do fast drills is to use a surgical guide. Irrigation is not necessary for cooling the bone because you're going to be in and out of the hole before the irrigation even turns on. I've been doing it for decades. I have videos online you can watch of the speed of the drills so you can see it. And you can't heat up the bone because you are going to be in the bone so little time. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe.